This video has been sponsored by Aki Bento. If you're interested in a monthly subscription box featuring unique anime items, stay tuned to the end of this video for an unboxing. Hey look, I'm reviewing something new and relevant. There's a first time for everything, kids. After watching this movie, I am far too cynical to enjoy anything anymore. My husband just got done with watching Full Metal Jacket when this movie, The Flavors of Youth, was the next movie suggested. Full Metal Jacket, and this was suggested. I don't know either. He decided to randomly play the movie, so I figured I'd watch a little bit of it since I haven't watched any anime movies recently. And let me tell you honestly, we couldn't stop cracking jokes throughout the whole movie. Here's why. The Flavors of Youth was directed by, oh, two out of three are Chinese names. I might butcher this, but here goes nothing. Li Hao Leng, Zhao Shou Yi Zhai Jing, and Yoshitaka Takeuchi. Hopefully I got those right. While being produced by one of the biggest names in anime movies right now, Noritaka Kawaguchi. The same producer who brought you 5 centimeters per second, The Garden of Words, and Your Name. The man knows how to produce beautiful movies, and this is no exception, but as for the story... well... stories... this had to be his weakest. This movie is an anthology of three separate stories following the lives of three different people transitioning through life in China. All three make their cases about the changing times and how artificial everything feels with the advancement of technology and how heartless it's becoming. But I seriously believe their deliveries per story were poorly done. They were either overly pretentious, cliched, or both, which struck a chord with me. The first story is about a man reflecting on his youth and the state of his current self by explaining the dishes he would eat then and now. In his eyes, the world has become more convenient with machine-made noodles and packaged ingredients, but they fall compared to the love and care that went to his dishes as a child. That's fine and all, but why does he sound like he's reading a novel? Your tongue goes numb. Little by little, it forgets the sensations of your hometown. That flavor I lost now seems to haunt me. The rice noodles they sold were handmade, translucent, and as beautiful as they were delicious. They were just a little chewy, so you had to take your time with them. It was like they were telling you to start your day nice and slow. Her hair would shine chestnut in the warm morning light. Blowing in the wind, I could have gazed at it forever. Okay, seriously, this guy could sneeze in his hand and describe the color and shine it gives. It feels like I'm honestly watching an espresso commercial rather than a movie. The noodles sold at the shop near the school were machine made. There was nothing special about the texture, but they were packed with piping hot fresh ingredients. But it ended up improving a whole lot more. I guess we are the choices we make, aren't we? Like, we get it, the food sucks now because China favors convenience and efficiency over heartfelt effort that made everything taste better. But can you just show it instead of just reading a book about it? And yes, that's the voice of Crispin Freeman, and sir, you are way too good for this. Unless he wants to get paid by just narrating life, then by all means, become the next Margaret Freeman. Next is a story about a woman at the height of her career as a model. Sadly, she feels like she's slowly being replaced by younger models and feels that the world would just move forward and not care if she decided to retire. At the same time, a story about remembering what makes you happy and being a family is also rammed down our faces. This is to show China's high demands and how unforgiving certain fields can be to the dismay of a person's mental health, but that message gets talked aside when she remembers how important family is and deciding to be more true to her heart somehow fixes everything. Yes, the fashion industry and modeling can be quite strenuous and pressuring to one's health, but just believe in yourself and everyone lives happily ever after. Did Disney write this one? Feels like it's got Pixar's fingerprints all over it. I don't care what anyone thinks or if I embarrass myself. I won't ever let them go. Then we have the final story, which comes off cheesy, but not as pretentious as the other since, well, it doesn't have as much narration. But yeah, it's still pretty cheesy. 
A working man remembers his childhood days and how he had a small crush on a girl he was close with. When her dad wanted her to go to a very prestigious school, he decides to try out for the same school without telling her. This sudden decision and transition in his life causes him to detach himself from everyone, especially her, but as he gets accepted into that school, he discovers that she didn't get accepted. And so our childhood sweethearts began to split apart due to their studies and parental pressure, but he later on discovers a recorded message from her saying she didn't get accepted into that school because she didn't want to go if it meant leaving him behind. Oh, don't you feel like crap now, Sonny? So he feels ashamed for leaving her behind and prioritizing his studies and future over his friend's feelings. This is the shoulda, coulda, woulda story highlighting how heartless the schooling system and parents can be in order to make sure their kids have decent futures. It's definitely the better of the three stories, but that's not really saying much given how each story was delivered. Not to mention that this story had the worst voice actor to play the young man, Limo. Ross Butler? Um... Who? Oh... Okay... Did they grab some random actor from two popular Netflix series for this? I, I watched one or two episodes of both 13 Reasons Why and Riverdale and felt they weren't for me, but does this guy really sound this boring? So your parents get to choose your whole life for you, huh? Then do whatever you want. Oh, hey, hey, Limo! I'm serious! I'm getting into the Yangpu Affiliate School, and then I'm going to Yangpu University. It's not like that. I just want to try to prove to everybody else that I can do it. Oh my goodness, you really do sound like you're determined, you energetic go-getter, you. So as I want to be fair and understand what this movie is trying to portray about the state of China right now, and how artificial and heartless it all feels with the growing technology, I think it was delivered as an overall bland and cliche product. With its annoying narration and overused storytelling, this anthology just comes off as fake and emotionless. I mean, if Blizzard can take a random character, give him a six minute cinematic, and make every everyone cry by watching those six minutes, how could this movie trying to make a warning story of China's current state of mind so bland and artificial? It's the very product they're warning us not to be, which I feel that's not the point they're aiming for. I don't know, but I found myself not enjoying this movie one bit. If you haven't seen it but still want to, it's available on Netflix with the English dub. Just don't say I didn't warn you about Limo's voice. Why would you say that? I did it because I wanted to lord it over my parents. It really had nothing to do with you. You're an actor! Try less enunciating and more emoting! If you have seen it, let me know what you thought of it in the comment section down below. I, for one, have seen better movies and TV series about how bright the future seemed when you're young until you reach adulthood. Speaking of which... Once again, this video was brought to you by Aki Bento. Last month's theme was Villain, and inside we got this Pop Funko figurine of Lord Boros from One Punch Man, this cool looking Villains themed t-shirt, a cute keychain of Blue Rose from Tiger and Bunny, a Villains themed wallet made of paper, yeah, you heard me right, it's made of paper. This cool looking wristband from Helsing. This exclusive pouch from Tiger and Bunny. A sticker from this month's YouTuber, The Alchemic Fox, and the monthly Occupento pen. Next month's theme will be Brawl, and it'll feature cool items from Cowboy Bebop, Dragon Ball Super, and Attack on Titan. Also, when you use this link below to order your box, you will not only be supporting our channel, but Occupento will also be donating one meal to their local food bank to fight child hunger in the US for every box that is purchased from them this month. So you'll not only be getting some neat items, but you'll also be supporting Anime America and helping children in need. So if you wish to purchase this amazing box, click on the link down below and use the code word ANIME to get a nice discount off of your first box. Hey there, if you like what we do on this channel, be sure to subscribe and click on the notification bell. If you wish to support us financially, we do have a Patreon page with numerous rewards to fit your budget. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter, at Anime America, and be sure to check out our other channel, Pop Spectrum. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned, Anime America.